We met under a nightmare moon, as the mysterious Mare in the Moon descended to Earth. We all became friends and saved the day from eternal night, reuniting our princess with her long-lost sister. Together with Twilight Sparkle, Mother Faust showed us that, as corny as it may sound, friendship might actually be magical. And that magic culminated in the best night ever, where we realized that the best laid plans of mice and ponies often go awry, but sometimes for the best, as long as we're together. We met again to save Equestria from the wiles of a chaotic demon. Though at first discouraged, we witnessed Twilight inspiring her friends to hope again, thus bringing about a return of harmony. We then gathered with a reluctant Twilight to witness the wedding of her, unbeknownst to us, brother, with the literal Princess of Love. Of course, this Canterlot wedding was a sham, and though Twilight and her friends fought courageously to fend off the evil changelings, in the end it was only the love of her brother and new sister-in-law that could defeat an enemy that had stymied even Princess Celestia. We met again in the fabled Crystal Empire, and together, Twilight and her friends once more defeated the evil crystalline magic of Dread King Sombra, saving an ancient and hidden empire from the evil of slavery. Then Twilight opened a magical Pandora's box, unleashing a spell changing the very natures of her friends. Somehow, she developed a magical mystery cure, and in so doing realized her potential and, to every pony's surprise, became an alicorn. We all gathered in Canterlot to celebrate her coronation, and nary an eye was dry as the meme-tastic wings no wings debate began in earnest. After a lengthy absence, our new princess returned as Princess Twilight Sparkle, and found herself in command of Equestria far sooner than she had ever hoped, as the royal sisters went missing. Together, with the help of her stalwart friends, Twilight was able to find and free her winged mentors. An oversight from a long time ago unleashed an evil red and black centaur upon the innocent ponies of Equestria, hell-bent on embiggening himself by sucking every last drop of magic from every pony. Twilight, entrusted with the power of the other three princesses, faced T-Rex head-on in a magic duel few of us will soon forget. He was ultimately vanquished when she realized that nothing, not even all the magic of Equestria, was worth losing her friends. Thus arose Twilight's kingdom. And with it, a castle with a mysterious cutie map, directing our ponies to a town on the furthest reaches of Equestria, where a communist dictator is intent on enforcing equality by removing what makes each pony unique and different. Once again, our heroines defeat the monster and restore the town's ponies to their former but marked glory. Then, an oddity develops in the story. With relatively little help from her friends, we witness Twilight Sparkle taking on the same former dictator unicorn, intent upon revenge by making the fabric of time itself her plaything. While her magic does not avail her, ultimately Twilight is able to convince the misguided temporal Zarina that what she is doing will not make her happy. Now, we stumble upon our friends, welcoming an, a new member of their group, um, the this, this same unicorn with a lust for control, power, and revenge. Together, they journey to the Crystal Empire for some ancient tribal rite of child sacrifice called a crystalling. And this new friend, the Starlight Glimmer, ultimately is able to bring together the resources that help Twilight save the day. Finally, and most recently, we rejoin our friends for another adventure, where we'll all save the world. Together, we'll overcome- Oh wait, what, what's this? While I don't deny the season 6 finale of My Little Pony Friendship Was Magic was a pretty decent episode, I don't think anyone else can deny that this finale has bucked the trend of every other premiere finale before it, which have all focused on Twilight Sparkle and her five best friends we've all fell in love with over the last six years, either saving Equestria or saving a town or just helping each other try to have a good time. Instead, this finale was the first episode since the meme-tastic number 100 to revolve around background characters. Our six loyal mares are literally relegated to being ornaments in Chrysalis's throne room, doing nothing at all except hanging around. We must rely on the leadership of Starlight Glimmer, if she isn't busy mind-raping any pony, the inventiveness of Trixie, 
if she's not busy stroking her own ego, the wit of discord, if he's not busy whining, and the fearlessness of some new changeling character, if he's not too busy sulking in the corner. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. I've been asked a few times about my thoughts on the finale, but I don't want to say much more than I've already said, because I know I'll sound whinier than Discord. Yes, I liked it as an episode of some generic pony cartoon show, but I hated what it did to the main six. I detested their exclusion from any significant role in the story. This used to be their show. But as I did predict in my first video on season six, it has unarguably now become the Starlight Glimmer Show. This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend. The end of our elaborate plans. The end of everything that stands. The end. No safety or surprise. The end. I'll never look into her eyes again. To me, this finale was kind of a fitting cap to the end of a very lackluster season. Though I don't have my ear to the ground online in the fandom as I once did, I am aware of the recent drama that erupted over people airing criticism of Season 6. Even Sethisto recently published a rambling treatise attempting to ask if we're being too analytical, or if the show really has degraded in quality. I seriously can't see how any sane and even-killed person can witness this season and not see it as being far below the quality of former seasons. And the reason, from what I can surmise, is quite simply one of passion. A lot of the old writers have left the show. Greats like Larson, Amy Keating Rogers, Megan McCarthy, even promising new writers like GM Burrow, who's very passionate about Pony, had not a single episode in this season. Are, are you even still a show writer, GM? This new crop of writers just doesn't seem to evince the same type of passion we're used to. Their lack of intimate knowledge of the characters is evident in their stories. Add to this the apparent crippling editing of Josh Haber this season, and surely you must see what I'm seeing. Right? But Haber's got what Pony fans crave. He's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? It's... it's what Haber uses to edit his scripts. But why does Haber use them to edit his scripts? Cause Haber's got electrolytes. But this criticism has apparently driven the show director, Jim Miller, to quit his Twitter account in an obscenity-laden tirade, telling bronies to go fuck themselves while declaring it's a show for little girls. Ignoring the absurdity of this when contrasted to what Faust has always said, peace be upon her. One must then ask oneself, if the show is aimed at little girls and the director has a Twitter account he uses to interact with these fans and, and he then tells people to fuck off, perhaps this is the type of language one would use towards little girls. So maybe we can lighten up the language restrictions on My Little Pony. How about some swearing ponies? But I don't want to be a negative Nancy when it comes to my positive ponies, so I should really just shut up here. I still love the characters, and I hold out hope that next season we'll see a change in writing. With the departure of Haber, my dreams may not in fact be mere memes. So here's to a fun but short hiatus, full of whatever it is you guys do when you're not watching ponies. Me? I'll be re-watching old ponies to relive those glory days of pony past, and all those tasty, tasty pony memes. Thanks for listening, every pony. Uh, I just didn't want to start this out being like, yo, yo, Corpulent Brony here, every pony, because I thought that would ruin everything, so I'll just say it now. Corpulent Brony, or whatever the fuck I'm supposed to say. Thanks for listening. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. Uh, I appreciated a lot of the comments from my last video. Sorry I didn't reply to them. I was kind of um, busy with other stuff, but I did end up replying to everyone, I think, or for the most part. So um, I, I do want to know what you guys think. Am, am I completely off base about either the finale or the season? Because I, I want to reiterate the finale was good like it was a good episode it, it was surprisingly good for this season but the thing I didn't like about it if you didn't get it and I'll again reiterate that I didn't like the way our main characters in the show were pushed into a corner for the entire season finale I could understand doing like an episode during the season where maybe you focus more on a background character like Starlight Glimmer or even the princesses, you know, people have wanted to see more of Celestia and Luna's backstory. But to take the main characters out of something as momentous and important as a finale, to me, seems a bit extreme and, and doesn't 
give me a lot of hope for the future. Um, at least the future as it would have been under Haber. And like I said it in the scripted portion of the video, I'm hoping that um, with the departure of Haber, we'll see maybe a return of some of that passion that I feel has been lacking. There are rumors that Vogel will take over as editor, and if he does, I hear he really likes the show as a show. I mean, he left an executive position to become a contract writer for the show. That shows to me a lot of chutzpah, as the, uh, as the Jewish folk would say. Yeah, I just went on a tangent, I think, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, it's late at night. I'm recording this in the closet. I didn't record with a video camera because last time I did, well, first of all, it takes a lot of setting up because I do bring a nice big light into the closet, which is kind of small to begin with. And last time I did this, the light fell and I broke the bulb and it was a huge like photo light bulb and um, full of mercury, I'm sure. And that mercury got all over the place. And now I've only got one more of those bulbs. I, I haven't really been able to find a good replacement on Amazon yet, and I don't really want to risk the other one for a video at this point until I at least find a replacement, and um, I'm, I'm sure I will find something. I just haven't given it the time. Anyway, wow, I am now really rambling. This has probably gone on way too long. I'm gonna have to edit the shit out of this anyway. Yeah. Ugh, man. I'm not leaving the fandom. I'm still here. I still have hopes for the future of Pony. I'm naturally a fairly optimistic person. Um, I had really high hopes for this season. They've sort of been dashed. I don't know. Hopefully next seasons won't be. Bye, every pony. Oh, I I'll probably still be long in the hiatus doing stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Bye. Bye.